Hello everyone, this is Erin Riffle. I am the Workforce Development and Metal Form EDU lead here at Precision Metal Forming Association. Um, we are right at two o'clock and I know that I have several of you who have been waiting patiently uh, to get started today. So um, we are going to go ahead and start this afternoon's webinar. Um, so all of you are going to be uh, in listen-only mode, uh, so you are muted and it's going to help reduce the background noise throughout um, this webinar. Uh, this session is part of the Workforce Matters Virtual Learning Series offered by PMA, and this series is complimentary for PMA members, so we hope you find this to be beneficial. So during the course of this webinar, if you have questions, you can use the raise your hand button um, or type your question into the chat box and I'll do my best to answer them along the way. I will stop periodically to see if there are questions. Um, and we want this to be valuable to you. So if there is something specific that we don't get a chance to address, um, please make sure that you send that question over to me, um, if not during the webinar, then at the end of the webinar. Um, but I will try to reserve some time at the end of the session to talk through any questions or comments if I didn't get a chance to address them. And also, just so everybody knows, this webinar is going to be archived and then posted in the members only area of the website. Um, so you'll be able to access this at a later time. Okay, so I wanna jump right in uh, to today's webinar overview. So after the webinar today, you should be able to do these following things. Um, so first, we want to be able to describe the five stages of training and development and identify those that PMA has already addressed with Metal Form EDU. We want to explain how to use the license calculator to determine the type and duration of license that an employee might need for training. We want to be able to talk about what a learning path is, how you can use them, and how you can build a training plan for an employee with that in mind, and then explain where Metal Form EDU can help fill gaps in your training programs. So throughout this session, um, you're going to hear more about these areas, and by the end, you should feel confident saying, yes, you know how to do these things. And also, whenever we're talking about learning objectives, we want those to be formatted with action verbs so it's specific enough to, to so you know if you've been successful at doing this or not. These are kind of ambitious learning objectives. Don't feel pressured to know everything after this session, and I'm happy to go into more detail with you in additional conversations. Um, you can also, if you're not already a part of the PMA HR training listserv, let me know and we can get you connected to that. Um, and you can share best practices with your colleagues and get input from your peers. So we're going to go into some key information about the stages of learning and how to weave Metalform EDU into your training program. So first, let's start thinking about what the key competencies are for everyone at your company. Does your company have a mission, a vision, a plan? So in your company, skills you may want everyone to have, competencies you may be looking for could include excellent customer service, effective communication, collaboration, accountability. These are what we sometimes call soft skills, not because they're simple, but because they don't relate to one specific technical competency. So we're gonna take that down one level from a company-wide concept and think about an example for a department. Like in this case, let's say your quality department. Some skills that could fit into this area might be attention to detail, data analysis, using tools like statistical process control, but also things like effective communication. So as we're thinking then, we go down another level Let's talk about skills that relate to one specific job. So for a quality inspector, for instance, you might be comfortable with a lower amount of leadership skills, but you would still need that individual to have strong data analysis skills and precision measurement skills. Now, if you're looking at the individual who is a quality inspector, you would walk through the list of competencies and skills and make an assessment of where they're performing compared to where the overall expected performance level should be for your company's success. Now, at a high level, 
we've just kind of gone through the process of what you would do to start structuring a training program. And that is not a small feat. Um, so we're going to tr talk a little bit more about what training means. We're going to look at how we see gaps between performance and expectation and specifics of the training process. And I'm also going to use some examples of how PMA programs, specifically Metalform EDU, can be used to create or augment a company's training program. Okay, so training and development at a company is different than the education people receive in school or from watching videos or reading documents. The concept of training means that we're providing direct instructions on how to complete a task. It's usually for a specific skill set with a narrow focus and is provided in a short period of time. So when we're teaching something, the goal is to impart a deeper, more complex knowledge about a subject. Like we're providing a background and research related to the topic. So training at a company must have a goal, and that should be a meaningful business goal. Training or learning at work is designed to achieve a change in behavior and thought. So for example, the goal in learning about the solar system is different than learning how to create a pivot table in Excel to perform financial analysis each month. So I want to talk about a few other concepts too. The first is a growth mindset. This is an individual trait. A person that is inquisitive realizes the world is changing and wants to be a part of it through continuous growth, reflection, and change. You can get ideas about whether a person has that type of mindset as early as the, the first interview. The second concept I want to talk about is a learning culture. Companies with a learning culture recognize that to maintain a competitive edge, you need to allow people the time, resources, and options to grow and develop. This type of continuous learning organization is, is like a living organism. It's connected, it's thriving, and getting better. So an important question for you and your colleagues to ask yourselves, what do you think about the concept of a growth mindset? Does your company have one? Do you agree that it's important? And what about a learning culture? Does your company have one as well? So these are concepts that you could research on your own. Um, if you'd like to reach out and talk with me about them more, I'm happy to have that conversation. Um, but it is an important consideration for any of the training that goes on in your company. So we're going to talk now about the typical reasons that companies want someone to be trained. So when someone is not performing as expected, training is the most common solution presented. So if you maybe this is you. Have you ever either been A, asked to get someone training because they're not performing as desired, or B, told someone they need to get training to fix their performance issue? So these are performance gaps. So let's talk about that. The starting point for an intervention with an employee, be it training or other activities, is to identify the types of skills, knowledge, and behaviors people need to be effective and committed to their position. So when you assess the level of skills, knowledge, and behavior that people have today, then determine the levels people need to have today and in the future, you can identify the gaps in skills and knowledge. So a gap between desired and actual performance can indeed be caused by a lack of competence or skill, and that can be addressed by training. But it could also be caused by mismatched tools and resources, so the materials and the systems that are used, the processes used to perform a task, or the motivation level, so the interest in performing the task effectively and efficiently. For new hire training, it's often a lack of skills or knowledge that causes a performance gap. Perhaps the new hire has the foundational skills of machining or measurement or inspection, but they're not familiar with the layout of your inspection checklist, your raw material tagging process, and how to enter production data in your database. Those gaps can be addressed by training. But it's worth expanding your questions as you 
as you get asked to build a training program or or an initiative or to investigate to look for other performance gaps, especially those that develop suddenly. Was there a change to the database layout? Was there a software upgrade or an issue so that now it doesn't match the procedures? Does the person constantly have to go back to the tool crib because their kits are missing tools, which leads them to miss their production metrics? Did they just get put into a performance improvement plan? Did their supervisor change? Is there an issue with their life outside of work? Are there appropriate job aids? Can the work environment be improved? There are so many questions that we need to ask to make sure we're designing the, the right intervention for the skills gap that we're experiencing with our employees. It's in the best interest of your company to spend your time, energy, and money efficiently. So it's important to do this due diligence up front before deciding if training is the answer. And I'm going to ask this question hypothetically, but I think many of you would have an answer. Have you, have you ever had a situation in your workplace where you found out the performance issue is not related to training, but to something else? So that's an important thing to consider before you even start building a training program. So I want to go through a detailed step-by-step -step process for training to get us thinking about everything that goes into a quality training program. So training and development is a science, with many people devoting their careers to researching and finding the best ways to modify behaviors and mindsets in adults. Uh, the most well-recognized framework for training design is called ADDI, which stands for the five phases of training development. That's analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. There are many other verbs you could use, but the ideas behind each step remain consistent. So I need you to remember, Training is done to fill a business need. It's not education like when you were in school. It's timely, relevant, and leads to behaviors and mindsets that lead to improved company performance. So we're gonna go into a little bit of detail about these concepts in the slides. And there are many professionals that specialize in helping train uh, or develop training programs for companies. So I can give you some information about that at another time after this webinar. Um, and some also some good questions to ask when you're engaging in that process with someone um, and talk about aspects of the make buy decision for training. Um, that's just a little bit outside of the scope of today. So we're going to go through sort of a quick overview of this training process. So in the analysis phase, you're clarifying the need that's driving the training request and defining the requirements that the training program should achieve, getting the right data on why and the what will lead to the best possible outcome, which is why we spend time there when we're looking at the gaps in performance and the training that we might need as an intervention. In the design phase, you're choosing the best method to achieve those objectives as well as the best delivery method. So you're also either structuring the in instructional material and presenting it or engaging a third party to aid in the design and other phases of the activity. Then in the development phase, you're converting design plans into reality. So this means developing lesson plans, workbooks, online tutorials, training checklists, assessments for on-the-job training, all of those tools. For smaller manufacturing companies, the majority of training often takes on the form of on-the-job training. So it's important to weave practice, feedback, and assessments into these types and every type of training. Now, in the implementation phase, you make the training materials available to the learners. So we're already into the fourth step of the process before we're directly involving the employee, okay? And then in the evaluation phase, you're assessing whether the training program is achieving its intended goals. So training programs facilitate people mastering a new behavior or a new mindset and sustaining it over time. That means that it's a best practice to check in and evaluate those results over time. And there are four widely recognized levels of training evaluation, reaction, learning, transfer of application or transfer of skills, and business results. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about how to integrate Metalform EDU into your training program. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about these stages and highlight where PMA has kind of done the heavy lifting for you to make it a little easier for people to get started with the right training designed by industry experts in a flexible format at the right price. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this one. First, 
the analysis phase lays the foundation for a successful training program or initiative. So this is the process of collecting information on performance gaps, desired performance, current performance, work conditions. It's a needs analysis. So this task, especially for companies with few to no resources, can be very daunting. And it's important to note that if you're looking for tools to help assess performance based on some standards in the industry, uh, PMA actually has a metalworking skills assessment and an occupational aptitude and knowledge assessment. So PMA has done a lot of the heavy lifting for our members. Uh, we work with industry experts to identify almost 30 critical job sets, um, sets of skills that are applicable to the majority of our members, and those are called our learning paths. So uh, the learning paths include a mix of mandatory and recommended courses that give you the flexibility to design a program without starting from scratch. So I'm going to just show you how to find that on our website. Um, so I'm going to just click here, hopefully, uh, on my link. Give me just one second here. Um, I'm going to take us in this way to the resources page, which is where most of the links in my presentation will be. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here in our resources section um, to this section that's called learning paths. So you can see that we've outlined several paths. And for today's purpose, we could go in great depth, but I'm just going to click on our press technician level one course. Um, so what, what I'm talking about, the mandatory and elective courses, you can see that we've sort of outlined what we think should be mandatory courses and what we think are elective courses. So for us, this is what PMA recommends. If you're working on someone who is joining your company as a, let's say, a, a, a beginning press operator, so not a whole lot of basic skills that relate to metal forming uh, in general or operating a stamping press, this would be a great place to start someone. So um, each of these learning paths, as you can see, is going to give you a total list of training hours. So, um, And these are all related to the courses in our online catalog, and I will get to that. So don't worry. You just need to know that this is here and this is available. We're going to go back through this um, in a little bit, so don't worry. All right, so we talked about the analyze phase, that's first. So if you're analyzing, you're finding those gaps in performance and you think that training is the solution and you're not sure exactly which courses you would want to recommend, that's where those learning paths would come in, okay? So we're going to the design phase next. So we, we know that we've got all the learning outcomes and objectives that we want, right? We've looked at the the goal for performance, we've looked at the current performance, we've seen that there's gaps. We're making determinations on where and how a course is going to be taught, if we're going to use software or what technology we're going to use. We're going to decide the structure, the look and feel, the content sources, subject matter analysis, media selection. That's a lot. So that's part of what this design phase includes. It's all these exercises, games, simulations, activities, time frames for each instructional element handouts, other materials that are necessary for the course. It includes assessments, a resource plan, a timeline, all of that. So, And a great way to document all of this information is in a storyboard or a course design document. Now, I don't know about every company, but most companies who are part of PMA don't have the luxury of designing um, all of their, their instructional content themselves. So. Um, PMA has realized that online training can be a great option for both technical and professional skills because it's always available, it ensures everyone receives consistent information, and it allows for graded self-paced training. Now, obviously, PMA supports using other methods to train. For example, we have roundtables, technical seminars, webinars, our Management Development Academy, which are all great ways to help grow and train your workforce. So I want to just show you that Obviously, we're talking about Metalform EDU today, but we have a full uh, workforce development uh, section of our website full of those resources that I just mentioned. Um, so you can kind of get here at any time in our website. So it's pma.org slash workforce and get more resources about Metalform EDU, about employee assessments, MDA, technical seminars, webinars, workshops, all of that. We have a lot of information available. So I'm going to go back. Um, get back here. 
to we just so we've talked about analyze, we've talked about design. Now talking about this, we've mentioned that Metalform EDU addresses a range of training needs, and so we've designed our catalog to help you understand the scope of our offering. So I'm going to go over where to find this catalog. We're going to go into some course topics and help you think about how Metalform EDU can address gaps in your workforce training programs. So we analyzed the general needs of our members and we grouped our courses into relevant categories. So if you're looking for help identifying major competencies and skill areas to start developing your training program, this is a great place to start. Um, so I'm going to click on this, give my internet browser just a second to load here. So I am browsing the online course catalog. Now I had a direct link here. Um, I am quickly just going to show you in our resources section where we were looking at um, the learning paths, if we scroll up here, we actually can click right above this section into the online catalog and it will open up into uh, into the course catalog. So here we've taken the broader course category areas and then we have subcategories underneath them. So you can actually see how many courses relate to each specific uh, content area. So for example, PMA's Press Shop Operator Training, if I click on that, you're going to see there's 18 courses. Um, and in here I can just click on any of them. I'm going to start with the introduction to metal stamping. So every course in our catalog is going to have an overview of here's here's what this course covers, here's the estimated uh, completion time, and then the objectives of what a learner should know by the end of this course. Okay, so, so that information is available at any time in our course catalog. And we did that specifically because we knew that it, it there are just so many things that that we could that a possible employee could could need to know depending on the scope of their job function that we wanted to make it clear that there are objectives in each of our courses that will address specific training needs. Okay, I'm going to toggle back here. We're going to go back to our presentation and we're going to talk about the next phase which is develop. So the design and the development stages go hand in hand with training programs. So depending on your familiarity and comfort with the subject matter, it may help to include one or two design reviews with expert performers in the area or tasks you're developing training for. So obviously here you in develop, you're bringing the design into reality. So you're developing lesson plans, slides, handouts, instructor guides, practice exercises, assessments, answer keys, study guides, training checklists for on-the-job training and other supplemental materials. You want to make sure that the program is going to achieve its objectives. You can pilot tests and assessments with people that match your target audience. You can do technical reviews with subject matter experts to make sure the content is accurate and appropriate. You can use people completely outside that, this area to act as guinea pigs to review the program as if it were the, the first learners that you have. So PMA has done this for you with metal form EDU courses. And we've also done this with things like our technical seminars, our customized implant training, and Management Development Academy. Okay. I want to just pause here for one moment. We're going to go talk a little bit about the metal form EDU courses. I just want to double check. I don't think I have any questions from anyone, but I wanted to take a moment to just pause here. And if someone has a question that I haven't addressed about the the first three phases, the analyze, design, and develop, um, this would be a great place to ask those for one minute. Okay, so we've talked a little bit here already about um, how PMA has developed online courses. So we're going to talk a little bit more here. So. Each lesson, as I mentioned, kind of starts with an outline of the learning objectives. So these are actual screenshots from our uh, PMA 1001 introduction uh, to metal stamping. So those objectives you saw in the course catalog description are, are the beginning slides or the beginning of the, the online course. So your learners, your employees are always going to know what the expectation is. By the end of this course, they should know these things. So um, Metal Form EDU courses also include the knowledge checks throughout the course that ensure an employee understands the concepts in the lesson. And then at the conclusion of the course, the 
before the employee takes the course assessment, there's a review of the material summarized in the things to remember section. So this structure helps reinforce the knowledge that's necessary to help an employee take and complete the assessment with the passing score. Okay, so I'm gonna just go here and show you, this is just a few different examples of other courses that are inside our catalog. They all have the same look and feel. So it's a fairly consistent learning experience between uh, course courses. So that's technical skills, soft skills training. We kind of run the gamut, foundational skills. We have over 600 courses in the catalog at this point. So there really are a huge uh, depth and breadth of courses. If you haven't seen that, you know, you can go into the course catalog in greater depth and kind of look at more of those, even though I, I just showed you one course to give you an example of what it, what it looks like. So as you probably realize, it takes significant resources, expertise, time, and money to develop great training. So if you want some insights to share with your leadership team on some of the benefits of utilizing Metaform EDU and other PMA training solutions versus building your own, this right here is a pretty great slide to share with them. And I'm going to send out a PDF of this presentation with my speaker notes to give you more details so you don't have to write them all down right now. So there are many training options in the marketplace today and not, not everything has to be built and delivered by your own company's training staff. There are certainly benefits to making your own course and but there's benefits to buying a course. For many smaller companies that don't have the staff, budget or experience in training and development, design efforts may be best served by a third party, especially if it's for a need shared by a large group of employees where consistency is critical. There are plenty of course developers and instructional designers out there. There are many online training providers, local and national associations and other community groups that offer training. So if you've done a thorough job of conducting a training needs analysis, you'll be armed to task those third parties and ask them the right questions to select an appropriate program. For most of your companies, I imagine that you would focus internal training design efforts on those roles and tasks that are very specialized, so those usually on the shop floor. So the task analysis process can serve as the backbone for an on-the-job training program. You can work with expert performers to develop appropriate practice and assessments to include in the training checklist that you create after you do the needs analysis, task analysis, and creation of learning outcomes. It can help to build a simple checklist of benefits for each of these two strategies and then rank them on a scale of one to five where one is not relevant or important and five is extremely important. So some of the benefits of making your own course are that the content and objectives are unique to your organization and you have some skilled staff members to write, develop, design, and do graphics. And your trainees may assign more credibility and relevance if you design in-house your management may expect you to create versus buy training. You may not have the budget to purchase courses and the salary cost of building courses may not be considered as an expense. You might have a large number of trainees and the, and the cost per package course might be too high. So you have to kind of look at all of these things and make this business case. Um, but on the flip side, instead of doing all of that yourself, some of the benefits of buying a course are that the content and objectives meet your needs. The quality of graphics and video and text are better than what you would do by yourself in-house. You maybe can't afford the professional talent that was used to build these packaged courses. And the courses already have a proven track record. They've been field tested and validated. And they can be at a lower cost overall because the development cost was effectively built into it and spread out over a number of clients. A support network already exists. The quality of delivery is consistent. It could be more cost effective to buy if it meets even 70% of your needs. So you need to compare your scores internally and decide what the best course of action is for you. I know that for us at PMA, we feel that it's really important for us to deliver a consistent training so that people across the industry are getting the same type of consistent foundational skill sets in their employees. So we've done all of this work. 
We've worked really, really hard to get this training program up, and now we're at the implement phase. So this is where you actually perform the training or allow learners to access it. It's the go live. So in this phase, you want to make sure that the right students are getting into the training. Now, for Metalform ADU, we developed a license calculator that tells you exactly which type and duration of license you need to purchase, which is based on an individual employee's training needs. So you're going to want to track their progress, which Metalform ADU does, and make sure that their supervisor is also monitoring their progress and setting expectations of completion and effort in the courses. You can also act as a liaison to get a student help if they're struggling with a particular component of the training program. Um, the supervisor can also be a part of this and should be a part of this, especially for on-the-job training where it's likely that the trainer also reports to that same supervisor. You'll also want to administer evaluations to make sure that the student achieved the object objectives and that the training program is meeting its goals over the longer term. So, PMA's programs are all active and continue to be audited and updated. So I want to walk you through um, how to kind of use this license calculator. I'm going to give you an example here. Um, remember, we talked about going to the resources page in our website, and that is where you're going to find a lot of Metalform EDU resources that will help you. So the very first resource is how to pick the best license for your needs. I'm just going to download this license calculator, which is an Excel spreadsheet going to open up here and once it does it's going to give me a couple different options so we'll walk through what those are um, okay so here you can see this is sort of the list of the directions so what we're going to do is go to the other worksheet tab which is the course selector we're going to put an X next to each the course of the courses that we want to assign to an employee. Then we're going to enter the number of training hours available per week for that employee. And then the system will give us the recommended license length field. And uh, then we can just kind of go through and start all over if we need to calculate that for a different employee. So I'm going to walk through this process here. So you can see down here right now it's not going to give us any information because we haven't selected any courses. I'm going to the course selector, and let's say that I am just going to kind of scroll back through. Now we're making the assumption that we've gone through the course catalog. We know some things we want we want our employees to have. So I'm going to go back through because I am going to go for sure pick some of the metal spinning courses. I'm going to do the lockout tagout. I'm going to go back up here because I know I want all of the PMA press operator courses. So as you can see, I'm just putting an X next to each of the courses. And what's happening here is it's calculating um, the length of each of the courses. And I'm going to go down because I know there were some other things I wanted to look at. I wanted to do some safety. That's always important. We're going to do a few other of the PPEs. Yep, some of that. Um, go through a few more. Oh, and I definitely want to go through some of these. So basically for me, I'm kind of going through the areas that I know I want, I would want my employee to have. So I also know, um, I actually want to go into a little bit about lean manufacturing and workplace organization. So these are sort of the basic skills that I want them to have. So I've gone through and I've decided these are the things that are important to us um, at my company. This is what I want my employee to know coming in the door. So I've calculated how many courses here. There's 40 total. So I just went back to the calculator, and it's actually added these up for me. So all of my courses are in the full library license. 23 of those are in the metal forming only license. So I'm going to want to purchase the full library license because that gives me access to everything. And I'm really lucky. This is a fairly new hire, and they've got four hours a week right now to go in. So they're telling me that if I have four hours a week to train this employee, it's going to take 10.6 weeks to, to have my employee go through all these courses. So it's recommending that I buy a 90-day license, and that's going to be the full library license. Okay, So that's the, the basics of how we use this calculator to decide what license is going to be the right fit for an employee that we wish to train using Metalform EDU. Okay? So, all right. So we were working through that, that implement phase here to decide what license we're going to purchase, right, because we're going to train an employee. 
um, and now we know what we need to do. So in our training program, then we would evaluate, did this training do what we want it to do? So like with any aspect of business, training is about results. So as we discussed in the analyze phase, evaluations have to be clearly tied to the learning objectives. And those are reasons that the training was needed, so that those are the things that should get tested. Evaluation methodology for training usually follows a model that was developed by the late Dr. Kirkpatrick in 1994. So most training programs can evaluate on reaction and learning right away. Transfer of knowledge takes longer and business results is challenging for many because it's hard to isolate other variables. So if you're interested in learning more about the Kirkpatrick evaluation levels, there are lots of articles and books up there and I encourage you to look into that if you're not familiar with it. Now, PMA worked with an instructional design firm to develop assessments for each and every Metalform EDU course, and you can be confident that each employee is, is comprehending the course material if they're passing these assessments. And the manager in Metalform EDU accounts has full visibility of each assessment attempt, their score, and the time it was taken. So you can see here, the HR managers in Metalform EDU have a dashboard. They have access to 10 different reports that check the user status, their summary, um, how often they've, they've, they've accessed courses, their course scores overall, um, just how long they've even spent looking at a course. So we have um, managers have a lot of ac access to that information, which is really critical to monitoring people for their success. So. Um, both learners and managers have access to the assessment scores. Um, I'm showing a dashboard from the manager level, but um, learners also have access to their score history. Um, so whether or not an employee passes, uh, an, an employer is able to see, the manager can see uh, how many attempts they've had, what their score was when they did pass, when they passed it. So there's time and date stamp information. So this is important for you to sort of assess where any training gaps might be, which can help managers tailor additional training specifically to bring that employee up to the level your company needs to ensure success. So we've kind of walked through now the five-step process for training, which is the A-D-D-I-E. We've shown where PMA has made some investment in uh, through Metalform EU to help companies. And we're gonna take a little bit closer look now at the the catalog, the licenses, and those, um, and then review how we can support you. But I know we have talked about a lot of things, so I want to take a minute here and see if there are any questions. If you want to type it into the chat or raise a hand and type it in, I am happy to answer. So I'll just give you all a minute. Okay, I think that we're, a, we're in a spot where we can go forward, so I'm going to do that. So I've showed you uh, the Metalform EDU catalog and talked about how it addresses different kinds of, of course content areas. So this online catalog, catalog is going to help you understand the scope of all of our offerings. Um, we, we can dig into the, the course areas that Metalform EDU address to help helps address the gaps in your workforce training program. So I know I've showed uh, I've shown you the the catalog. We're going to go back into it just so we can take a look. So again, this you know the first time we kind of went through the press operator training, but I want to just scroll through these catalog areas so that you get a sense of the scope of courses that are available in Metalform EDU. So we have automation, career building, CNC machining, composites, communication, customer service, cutting tools, so many things. Um, lean manufacturing, introduction to manufacturing, logistics, materials, math, geometry, measurement tools. <laughs> I mean, we have even more. We have so many, um, and I'm just going to expand out here. It, I mean, it's it's really, really a huge scope of courses. Um, so in general, PMA analyzed the needs of members, and we've grouped our courses into these content areas. So if you're looking for help identifying major competencies and skill areas to start developing your program, this is a good place to start. Um, so you can also get to the course catalog through the PMA website. Uh, I'm going to just show you that one more time. Um, so I'm going to go back actually uh, to the PMA homepage. So 
So from here, if you're at the home page of our website, you can hover your mouse over Metalform EDU and just click directly into the online catalog and it will take you to this link. You do not have to have an account or be logged in to see that. Um, so that is just a reminder for you. All right, I'm gonna go back to uh, my presentation here. So I'm gonna just review this part. We talked about the Metalform EDU tools of both the learning paths and the license calculator. Um, so again, we're going to just go back through because I want to make sure everybody understands how to get to these resources. So we're navigating from the home page. I have a lot of tabs open, so I'm going to close some of these things. Um, but we're going to go back here from the Metalform EDU section. We're going to click on resources. And from here, we scroll down. Right here is where we get the license calculator. And if we keep scrolling down, to the bottom of the page is where we see all of our learning paths. So that's going to give you the specific list of courses that you're going to want to put your employee in inside their Metalform EDU license. Okay, so we've gone through that. All right, I want to go through sort of what the, uh, the training uh, catalog options are. Let me go back here. All right, gone through the catalog. heading backwards. One second. I'm going to go here. Okay, so we have licenses that PMA has packaged their content in. So we have two basic choices of, of licenses. We have a full library license, and that means that all 600 plus courses are inside that license. And for many companies who are doing technical skills and soft skills training and supervisory skills training, the full library license is going to be their best choice. However, there are some companies that are devoted, they're, they're devoting their training programs specifically to the PMA developed courses in um, press shop operations, die setter training, uh, lockout, tag out for metal stamping and metal spinning. So those courses are included in the metal forming license. And that comes in uh, both English and Spanish. So we have many, many choices for you here. Um, and member companies also have the option of choosing different license duration. So you can see here we have an annual license, a six month license, a three month license and a one month license. That is true for the full library, for the metal forming license and for the Spanish metal forming license. And what that means is that you will purchase one license for each employee that you want to train and it is for that period of time. So let's say you have a new hire and you, you think they're gonna do great, um, but you wanna make sure that they have the skills, the foundational skills. So you're going to buy a one month license and you're going to assign them courses from that license. And if they make it through that first month and they're doing very well and you know you have more training you want to do with them, then you would just buy a separate content license. Let's say you started with just the metal forming one month license, but you'd like to train them on other things. You could buy them a different license and it will, it will, you can go ahead and assign new courses to them. So it is a one-to-one -one ratio of licenses to employees that you want to train. So as I mentioned, we do have some license options available in Spanish. Um, not only is the course content in Spanish, but you can actually navigate uh, through the learning management system through Metalform EDU in Spanish as well. So for folks uh, who, for whom English is not their first language, if they're more comfortable with Spanish, this is an excellent option for, for those employees as well. Um, I have had the question before, of, uh, do we have um, these licenses available in other languages and we do not at this time so English and Spanish are the options that we have available okay I do want to talk a little bit about we've talked about HR manager access and metal form EDU so I've included a few screenshots here of parts of the system um, so the the manager dashboard is going to show all the licenses that have been purchased for your company the start date and expiration dates of all of those licenses now, just keep in mind that the license 
starts at the time of purchase. So, and the, the licenses aren't considered consumed until you assign a user to it and they start taking courses. So it is important to note that you cannot transfer licenses from employee to employee. However, let's say that unfortunately you hired someone and then they said, I really, I'm not going to be able to start and you needed to reassign that license to an employee. If they haven't taken courses yet, you can indeed reassign that license. But once an employee has started taking courses, that license is considered used by them. And that, that license is going to hold the, their training record forever. Even if it expires, you'll still be able to go into the system and have an access uh, to their training records. So that's an important thing that you should know. I'm going to go through here. I'm showing some more information about the not only do managers have access to uh, purchase history through the licenses, but they also um, have access to reports. And we mentioned this earlier, that they show user progress and the scores, um, how often they uh, an employee has logged in, how long they've spent working on their training, how many times they've taken a course, their, their course, uh, their assessment grade history. It's a pretty robust list of things that are included for managers. So if you haven't been on some of the other uh, webinars that we offer about Metalform EDU, uh, we do offer those um, twice a month. They're on Wednesdays at noon Eastern time. And we will go into greater detail about how managers um, can access reports and manage other users in the system. So that is a great option. And those are free webinars. So you are welcome to come and attend. And you can spend some more time with me. Um, we work really hard here for you at PMA, and we provide both online and phone-based support for Metalform EDU. We have a couple online resources that are really important to note. Um, the FAQ section, um, it, like we navigate through everything uh, on the Metalform EDU section of the website to the FAQ section, which opens up into a knowledge base that has, we think it's something like 75 articles that have been written with step-by-step -step screenshots and directions to help you navigate through the system. Um, and obviously, you can also give us a phone call, but uh, you can indeed also submit a support ticket uh, through this Metalform EDU section, and that will come to the full EDU team who can help you uh, not only on how to buy licenses, but you know if you have questions on how to set up your program, if you're working on assigning licenses, if you're working on assigning courses, whatever support you need, we're available for that. So we've walked through the general training process. What does that mean? How Metalform EDU can help you address some of those gaps by using the learning path, why you can customize it through the learning or the license calculator to make sure you're buying the right license for each employee you want to train. Um, and I do just want to briefly touch on a few other uh, workforce development solutions that PMA offers. So obviously here we have assessments. So PMA can help you identify top talent while you hire, promote, and transfer employees uh, through our metal working skills assessment and our occupational aptitude and knowledge assessment. Um, now the occupational aptitude and knowledge assessment is available through Metalform EDU. So that is something that you can purchase anytime. We have technical seminars and functional roundtables. So those are one and two day seminars to train and enhance your workers' knowledge and competencies in different technologies and processes, as well as annual roundtables to share best practices and gain insight from peers. Um, if you don't know, I would like to mention that the Human Resources and Training uh, Roundtable is coming up in March. That'll be here at PMA, March 24th and 25th. If you, uh, attendance is limited, to about, I think it caps out at about 25 participants. So if you haven't registered yet, you might want to consider doing that. Um, we also offer customized implant training because sometimes it can be difficult to take a group of employees out of your company for training um, or to find training that meets a really specific need. So we do have experts who are available to deliver those customized training solutions at your location, a uh, time frame that works for you. Um, we obviously host a number of webinars and virtual learning um, opportunities every month that cover a range of topics that are related to industry statistics and benchmarking, professional development, legal and regulatory updates, technical training, and so much more. And this is a complimentary service as part of your membership. And I've mentioned uh, Management Development Academy. Um, and this is an interactive three-part series of customized workshops that are designed to grow 
uh, business and leadership acumen and prepare uh, up, up and coming leaders for success in their current and future roles. Um, this rotates through different cities across the country and the next cohort is starting next month um, in February and that will kick off in Nashville. All right. Um, I did want to talk about, we mentioned this earlier and I wanted to get you uh, this kind of um, information about how to help sell the benefits of training to your company's leadership. So this is a great approach to look at um, calculating the cost versus the benefits. And remember, I'm sending out a PDF of this presentation uh, with speaker notes. So it's kind of got some information about costs that you need to think about. You want to sum up all one-time upfront costs and all uh, costs incurred each time a course is offered, right, versus summing up all the one-time benefits, the benefits occurring per participant, the total value of all the improvements per participant per month, right? And think about what does that mean in terms of uh, really where the cost savings is going to come in, right? So, um, so this is, I think it's gonna be helpful, but again, this is a unique to each company question. So everyone is going to have their own set of values around where, where the benefit is. Now we personally believe that any time that you can uh, rely on a, uh, on a grouping of experts instead of having to uh, do it all yourself, that's part of the benefit of being part of an organization like PMA, where you have access to things that have been vetted, they have been looked at by subject matter experts, you're not doing it all alone. And we think that that is, definitely worth an investment. Okay. So I want to go back through here and just talk about um, the learning objectives that we have sort of gone through here. We talked about the five stages of training and development and identified those that PMA has already sort of addressed with Metal for Me to You. We've explained how to use the license calculator to determine the type and duration of license that is needed for an employee. We describe what a learning path is, how to use them to build training, and explain where Metal for Me you can help fill gaps in your training program. So uh, we're sort of at the end of the list of, of things for today. We have a few minutes for questions if you have any. Um, otherwise, you certainly can reach me. Um, there's my email address and there's my direct phone number uh, with my extension there. Um, I, again, will send a PDF of this information, uh, it will come out to you via email. Um, I'm just gonna double check one more time to see if there are any uh, questions in the chat here. I wanna make sure I answer them if I, if I need to. One person said no questions, but thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate you all taking time out of your very busy schedules to listen to what I have to share with you. Um, here at PMA, I am very passionate about training. It's really important to me that we have a skilled workforce, so that's part of what I'm really thrilled to be able to share with you about this. Um, and if there are no other questions, um, I'm just gonna tell you all to have a lovely rest of your day, rest of your week, and let me know if there's anything else I can do. Thank you so much.